Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2021. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering Job 14 through 16 and Acts 9, 22 through 43. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice, so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you, and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Job 14. Mortals born of women are of few days and full of trouble. They spring up like flowers and wither away like fleeting shadows. They do not endure. Do you fix your eye on them? Will you bring them before you for judgment? Who can bring what is pure from the impure? No one. A person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So look away from him and let him alone till he has put in his time like a hired laborer. At least there is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground, and its stump die in the soil. Yet, at the scant of water, it will bud, and put forth shoots like a plant. But a man dies and is laid low. He breathes his last and is no more. As the water of the lake dries up, or a river bed becomes parched and dry, so he lies down and does not rise, till the heavens are no more. People will not awake, or be aroused from their sleep. If only you would hide me in the grave, and conceal me till your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time, and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You will call and I will answer you, and you will long for the creature that your hands have made. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag, and you will cover over my sin. But as a mountain in erodes and crumbles, and as a rock is moved from its place, as water wears away stone, and torrents wash away the soil, so you destroy a person's hope. You overpower them once, only uh, for all, and they are gone. You change their continents and send them away. If their children are honored, they do not know it. If their offspring are brought low, they do not see it. They feel but the pain of their own bodies and mourn only for themselves. Eliphaz, Job 15 Then Olivia's the Temanite replied, Would a wise person answer with empty notions, or fill their belly with the hot east wind? Would they argue with useless words, with speeches with that have no value? But you even undermine pity and hinder devotion to God. Your sin prompts your mouth and adapt you adapt the tongue of the crafty you own, your own mouth condemns you not mine your own lips testify against you are you the first man ever born and when were you brought forth before the hills do you listen in on god's counsel do you have a monopoly on wisdom what do you know what do you not know? What insights do you have that we do not have? The gray-haired and the aged are on our side. 
men even older than your father, are God's consolations not enough for you, in your words, spoken gently to you? Why was your heart carried you? Why has your heart carried you away? And why did you your eyes flash so that you vent your rage against God and pour out such words from your mouth? What are mortals that they could be pure or those born of women that they could be righteous? If God places no trust in his holy ones, even yeah, if even he has the heavens are not pure in his eyes. How much less mortals how are who are vile and corrupt, who drink up evil like water? Listen to me, and I will explain to you. Let me tell you what I have seen. What the wise have declared, hiding nothing, received from their ancestors, to whom alone the land was given when no foreigners moved among them. All his days the wicked man suffers torment. The ruthless man through all the years stored up for him. Terrifying sounds fill his ears, and when all seems well, marauders attack him. He despairs of escaping the realm of darkness. He is marked for the sword. He wanders about for food like a vulture. He knows the day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish fill him with terror. Trouble overwhelms him like a king poised to attack. Because he shakes his fist at God and vaults himself against the Almighty, de de definitely charging against him with a thick, strong shield. Though his face is covered with fat, with fat and his wrist bulges with flesh, he will inhabit ruined, ruined towns and houses where no one lives, houses crumbling to rubble. He will no longer be rich, and his wealth will not endure. Nor will his possessions spread over the land. He will not escape the darkness. A flame will wither his shoots, and the breath of God's mouth will carry him away. Let him do not deceive himself by trusting what is worthless, for he will get nothing in return. Before his time he will wither, and his branches will not flourish. He will be like a vine stripped of its unripe grapes, like an olive tree shredded its bless blossoms. For the company of the godless will be barren, and fire will consume the tents of those who love bribes. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. Their wombs fashions deceit. Job 16 Then Job replied, I have heard many things like these. You are miserable comforters, all of you. Will you long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep on arguing? I also could speak like you. If you were in my place, I could make fine speeches against you and shake my, hand, my head at you. But my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. Yet, if I speak, my pain is not relieved, and if I refrain, it does not go away. Surely, God, you have worn me out. You have devastated my entire household. You have shriveled me up, and it has become a witness. My, my gauntness rises up 
and testifies against me. God assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me. My opponent fastens on me his piercing eyes. People open their mouths to jeer at me. They strike me at my cheek and scorn and untie together and unite together against me. God has turned me over to the ungodly and thrown me into the clutches of the wicked. All was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by the neck and crushed me. He has made me his target. He is, his archers surrounded me. Without pity, he pierced my kidneys and spilled my gall on the ground. Again and again, he burst upon me. He rushes at me like a warrior. I have sewed sackcloth over my skin and bruised my brow in the dust. My face is red with weeping. Dark shadows rings on my eyes. Yet my hands have been free of violence, and my prayer is pure. Earth to do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend. As my eyes pour out tears to God, on behalf of a man he pleads with God as one pleads for a friend. Only a few years will pass before I take the path of no return. That was Job 14 through 16. And now we'll be following, um, covering Acts 9, 22. So let's turn to Acts 9. It's, uh, chapter 22, verse, verse 22. Acts chapter 9, verse 22. Yeah, we'll call it that. Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by providing, uh, by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. But his fellow followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he had really was a disciple. But Barnabas, Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how Damascus had been preached fiercely. In Damascus, he had preached fiercely in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. And when the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea, and sent him off to Teresa. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It increased in number. As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydia. Then there he found a man named Ananias 
who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. And Ness, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals, heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately Ananias got up, and all those who lived in Lydia and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. In Joppa there was a disciple named Tabeth. In Greek her name is Dorakas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydia was near Joppa, and so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydia, they sent two, two men to him and urged him, Please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorocus had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them out of the room. Then he got down on his knees, and he prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. And that was Acts 9, 22-43. Which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Job 17 through 19 and Acts 10, 1 through 23. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I would not be able to be your messenger of the word. And so I thank you. I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said amen. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2021 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. And so come back and see us tomorrow because we'll be here, and we hope that you are too.